Hello and welcome to Crime and Justice. Tonight we're looking back over the case of Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, who went missing on the between the hours of midnight and six AM on the twenty sixth of February twenty twenty four. Now he did the, the best miracle, trick, whatever you want to call it, because he disappeared. He left that house without leaving any signs, no footprints, no scent, nothing, which is pretty miraculous for a young lad that has who has autism, is very clever, It's very clever, he's going to get a uh, chess, bids adults at chess, I wouldn't even know where to start on chess board, I really wouldn't, anyway, so, he went missing, and we've come to find out that, um, he didn't take, he wasn't wearing, well, let's say he wasn't wearing any shoes, However, if you go back over the interviews with the police, they don't actually actually say he's barefoot. They don't. So, did he have some sort of shoe on? Did he have a slip slippers on? What we don't know. We just know he left without his shoes because all his shoes are accounted for. He also left without his phone, a coat, because between midnight and 6am February time, it's going to be cold out there. It's not like in the summer where it starts warming up. Even then it's quite cold. Right, so he left without a coat, he left without his phone, and without his switch. Now, his switch he was glued to because he loved playing his Minecraft games on it, right? He also had money saved up in his bedroom that he'd been saving here and there. You know what I mean? Didn't take none of that. So, he didn't take his wallet. Didn't take his money. Didn't take nothing. But this lad, we are supposed to believe, has run away. Now, I'm sure if he's clever enough to leave the house without any sort of, uh, leaving any sort of scent or footprints or anything, I'm sure enough he's clever enough to think, well, I'll need money, I'll need a coat, I'll need my phone, and, what else? Oh, yeah, I'll need shoes. Right, now most autistic children have a routine. They like routine. Right, and from an early age, Sebastian learned not to go outside without wearing his shoes. Because when he was very, very young, what he thought was a, a, a pile of mud was a pile of, what was it? what I call red ants or something like that, they bite you. They literally bite you. And you trod in these, a pile, like a big nest of these ants. So he got bitten. So since then, he's never gone outside without shoes. Even to collect the post from the post box, he put slippers on or something on to go outside. So that is a big red flag to me because that's his routine. His shoes were always kept by the front door. Right? Although he didn't really go out the front door very often. He'd go out the garage way because he'd go out in the car. So they'd get in the car, drive out the garage and drive away. So... Personally, I think 
if it was me, I'd say, right, keep your shoes by the garage door or just inside by the garage door. You know what I mean? The entrance from the garage into the house. Keep your shoes there. Your outside shoes. Right? Your slippers. Keep in your bedroom. Right? However, these shoes are always kept at the front door. And his mother has accounted for all of them. Now, this lad is very clever, as I've said. And he don't, oh, one of the thing is, he doesn't like bugs, flies, bugs, or anything like that. He doesn't like them. He doesn't like getting dirty. So I can't see a 15-year-old lad wandering through, going out barefooted, which he don't like doing anyway, wandering through a thick, forest, uh, wooded area, right, where there's bugs and flies and mud and dirt. I can't see that happening. So... It's just, okay, so when was he last seen? Well, physically, uh, by, he was last seen by anyone else other than family was when he was at the Texas Roadhouse on the evening with his mum. And Seth, his bio father, finally got to see that video after months and months of asking. Why can I show him when you first asked, can I see that video when he left the roadhouse? But they wouldn't show it him, but finally they showed it him. All right? Anyway, so that is the last actual physical sighting. There is a sighting of someone taking the trash cans down to the curb. Now, we are supposed to believe, again, this is Sebastian. Because that was his chore, to take the trash bins out every Sunday night, ready for collection Monday morning. So we are supposed to believe that it's Sebastian. However, it's too dark to town and what annoys me most is they didn't have no cameras on the house so they say and they relied on their neighbours cameras the neighbours ring doorbells the neighbours home security cameras you know what I mean? They relied on their neighbours. What a piss poor neighbour they are. You know what I mean? Can't, she works for uh, an installation, a company that installs home security video and cameras. So why, why didn't she have it on her house? She has now. Now he's gone. She's got cameras up on the house. Right, so, I'm going to show you just a little clip, because we have to presume everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Okay, so we can't go around and say, oh, you're guilty, you're guilty, because you're acting this way. Right, you're guilty. But we do. Tell the truth, we do. We, sh we presume a lot of people are guilty by the way they act and by the way they behave. But I've come across this little clip today and it's on Cork TV one. And I'm only going to show you the small clip and it's of what the uh, law enforcement first said. Right? Near the beginning of... <clears throat> when Sebastian first went missing. So, 
Let's listen to this. Investigation this search for a missing child. There is no evidence to support foul play is involved in the disappearance of Sebastian. But at this point, you don't rule it out? We're not ruling anything out. Right. There's no evidence of foul play. Right. Okay. Mm, I don't know. Over the last few, over the last, what, February? Which March, March to April. To July. July. Over the last five months, I'd say there's a, a lot of circumstantial evidence, anyway. Right? We had the video come out with the lights. Right? Now, let's backtrack a bit. Right? Let's backtrack. On the Monday when he was reported missing, he was down as a runaway. So he's down as an endangered child because they're classing him as a runaway. On the Tuesday, they changed it to an Amber Alert. But on the Wednesday, something happened, or they heard, or seen, or was told something, where they suddenly started thinking down other routes. Right. Now, I've got a feeling that was the video with the lights. Because in one interview, Katie's, they were asked if, by the police, if Sebastian had took a torch. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, he did. He used to have this little, you know, those little... Little pen torches, sort of thing that fit in your pocket. You put it on your keychain so that you can see what you're doing when you're coming in drunk at night, so you can see the door <laughs> where you're putting your key. Right? He had one of them little torches, he used to use it under his bed to read books or whatever he was doing. Right? So, oh, yeah, that's missing because they can't find that anyway, so that's missing. But then, they didn't know why they asked that question then. Because this was like on the Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday after he went missing. Well, by then, they'd had C CCTV handed in to them from home, home security videos handed in to them. And one of them was on the corner of their road. And it showed... A, tour, a little flashlight, like a little light coming from the back end of their house, round the, what they call the communal area, round their neighbour's house, along to the corner of their road. Well, at first, we only got that little clip, and we thought, well, what the hell, that, you know what I mean? That could be, what do they call them over in the US, little flies that light up in the night sort of thing. Anyway. But then we got to see, eventually, got to see the full video. And it shows a car, an image, a silhouette of a car parked up on the corner, just before their corner of their road, parked up. And this little torch thing was coming down the little gully way, be, right? I should imagine that's like an overflow from any rainwater, where the rainwater can flood into, right? Coming down there towards that car. So I believe that is why they asked him, did Sebastian take a torch? However, when this video came out, ooh, weeks later, Law enforcement said, that was a garbage truck. Uh, what? What? That was a garbage truck. 
Oh, John, no, no. I looked at it and I thought, oh, John, from the angle of that camera, because they are trying to sell us that, 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 those little lights were from the garbage truck coming along a top road, a road next to theirs. So it's coming across along the top of that road, right? And that, this camera, house camera, picked up the garbage truck. I'm going, no, no way, not happening. That is not going to pick up a garbage truck at that angle. No, it's not happening. If you can give me a camera that good, I want one. I want one. Flipping hell, I'll be able to see right into my neighbours. <laughs> anyway, so they said it had no significant bearing to the case. However, it might do in the future. Well, does he or doesn't he? What is it? Does it have bearing to the case? Doesn't does, it doesn't have bearing? You can't say it doesn't have bearing to the case and then say, however, in the future it might. All right? So, all this went on for weeks and weeks. And even now, people are still going on about this video. Right? And it's getting us nowhere because the police won't tell us nothing and they don't have to tell us anything. We are not going to solve this case. The only people who are going to solve this case or find that lag is people. If you're on YouTube and you are boots on the ground, you have a higher possibility of finding that lag than someone like me sitting in what I now call my little sanctuary, my little office. Just need some more work done on it. Hopefully my son can help me on that. And um, hopefully, and so people like me, I'm not going to find Sebastian. We only report what we are told, what we are given, what we see. You know what I mean? Anyway, for five months now, nothing's been going out. The father had to step back from doing searches for a while because he had an injury. That got, I think this injury, an old injury, but it just got aggravated more when he was out on his searches. So he had to have an operation the other week. He's now back out on his searches. This is a father that was out searching the rivers the other weekend and hoping and praying he didn't find him because he does not want to believe his son is no longer with us. It's fair enough. You can't take that hope away from this man. You can't. Right? Oh, I've just got to put my lamps on. People must think my balcony is like Blackpool Illumination sometimes if they look over here. Anyway, so you can't give it to, you, you got to give it to the father. He's out there searching. He's arranging searches and he's doing it privately because last time his searches were being followed. They're being harassed. We've had other organisations go out there doing searches, and they're being harassed. They're being threatened. Why? Who is it that does not want this little boy found? Right? Now, you heard me talking about Seth, the father. Well, not much about Katie, the mother, or even CP, Chris Proudfoot, the stepfather. Within weeks, a few weeks of him going missing, he went back to work. CP had to go back to work. Fair enough. You know what I mean? You've got to work. You've got to pay a mortgage. You've got to pay bills. You've got to go back to work. So he goes back to work. Katie goes with him. But then comes back about a week, about a week later. But then disappears again down there. 
then they come back again. But now she's down there in a five-wheeler. Wherever he is, she's there with him. Because she feels threatened. We don't care about you, Katie. All we care about is tell the truth. You the last one who was with him. You was the last one who sp saw him. You was the last one who spoke to him. Tell the truth. What happened in that house on Sunday night? Because it's not adding up. What is being said does not add up. Anyway, I've got some stuff. Yeah. I've been going over for, for, for the last month or more now, probably a bit longer, transcripts of, I'm typing it out word for word sort of thing, of what they say, right? And I'll tell you something, it's so... When all you hear for hours and hours and hours on end is this voice of CP, that's Chris Proudful. I can't drink because of certain medication I'm on. But I swear to God, I feel like I want to down a bottle of vodka or a bottle of gin. After a few hours of listening to this guy. Right? Now I'm sharing it with you so that you can see what, what I mean, what I've done. Right, um, yeah, you got it. And this was a very, what am I doing? That can go off. This was a very, very lengthy interview. Because it goes on for quite a while before Chris actually joins. Right? Before Chris actually joins the interview. Is this very Georgie? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, uh, oh God. It was like over an hour before he joined. Because apparently he was on another telephone call. So I should imagine he was on another telephone interview. Uh, so it was like over an hour before he came in. I'm trying to... Oh, here it is. I'm trying to find the first... Time he comes in, right? This uh, this is when it was twenty one days. So this was at three weeks, three weeks of this lag being missing. We are now at five months, right? And. When Katie talks, she whispers like, oh, I don't know, it's, it's, sort of thing, so, so, so softly. And it's like, what was that she said? And I literally had to keep going back, rewinding it back to catch what she was saying because it's so softly spoken. I'm thinking, really, Katie, are you trying to make out to everyone you, your such a softly spoken woman. I don't believe that for one minute. I really don't. Uh, right, we'll get to... Hi. This is just the introduction of Hello Chris and all this blah, 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 blah. Because I just found some of the hosts that do these interviews, they tend to babble on a lot before we even get to some of the questions that we want to hear. 
And even then, they're not even telling, reading out all the questions because they're, they're literally going through them and going, no, no, we won't ask that one, we can't ask that one, no. Oh, we can ask this one. Right, but Katie's there as well. Sitting right beside him. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my downloads and I'll pull up this video. So we can watch the video as well, if you want. Or I'll have it on, but have the screen up, just have the sound come through. Okay. Don't need to see them. Well, there's nothing to see anyway. It's just the uh, panel pictures up on there. There's nothing to be seen. Oh, God. <laughs> now, this is the second interview they have given done with this Right, this is the second interview. Now I've just got to find out where Chris comes into it. I should have really put a timer by this side as well when you first come into it. But I know it was over an hour. Where am I my cats up to? Right, let's start from here. All right. I'm going to speak it up. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. All right. I've got to share this. All right. But I don't really want that up. I want to have this up. Uh and I'll leave the video because I'm just going to read some new things that why we didn't. There's always a possibility here. Right, right. Like Katie, when she talks about um, Sebastian, she talks about him like is a like a six, seven year old, if not younger. Because it's like, what did you like to do besides gaming and whatever things that Sebastian likes to do? And she goes, we get the little kids crafts from Lowe's and Home Depot. So he likes to build little things with me. He's 15 years old. This is the sort of thing I do with my six and seven year old grandchildren. In fact, I was doing it this weekend with them. You know what I mean? When they're 15, I should hope he can, like my one grandson, he'll build, build little robots or a cardboard, anything he can get his hands on. He'll make like a little rocket or robot or something like that. He's six. So I can imagine when he's 15, he's going to be more technically minded. <laughs> Start building these, you know, these mechanical robots you can buy and build. Hmm? That my son hates me buying for my grandkids because he can't put them together. Right? But that's the sort of thing I can see my grandson doing when he's 15. Right? I can't see him doing the crafts and things. I really can't. 
Not when he's 15. So she treats him like a very young child. He didn't have many friends. He didn't have any friends. Right? Because there's a question that was asked. Um, do you think it's possible that, that you told me before, blah, blah, blah. So do you think there's any way possible that he could have met a friend online? either at school or at his father's or at, through, at your house. Don't, don't get me. Do you think that's possible in any way? I think it is possible. Right? Because 15-year-olds can be very sneaky. They're not going to tell you everything, are they? Right? And he gets, it says, we dig in, there's always a possibility that this is a question that I can't, I like, there's always a possibility that a child can do something. Now, I've been typing it word for word, literally, word for word, as I've said it, as it's come out of their mouth, and I'm thinking this doesn't make sense, but I'm typing away, right? The house is locked down with that kind of situation. So he, it's like they say, it's difficult to get him to use this, take his phone with him. Well, why would you want to take his phone with him? Most people take, not most youngsters take the phone with them because they're playing a, a game on the phone. You know what I mean? They've got friends, they message. Well, just think to the park now, see you in an hour. Or see you in half an hour, whatever. Not like when we was kids, we used to say, well, I'm going in for my dinner now. And everyone knew, do not knock on my mum's door. And it was the same with us, with my friends. We wouldn't knock on their doors. We'd just think, uh, we automatically knew where to meet up. Right? So... If it was in the winter, it was up by the office blocks on the corner by where we lived. If it was in the summer, then it was up at the park. Hi. So, we we just go out to gang after tea, or whatever it was. And then, we wasn't expected to knock on doors. No, 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 no we didn't do that. We just wait for our friends to meet us. Not like when my kids were growing up, because they didn't have mobile phones then either. Um, I'd get them knocking the door while they're eating the dinner. They're eating the dinner. Pee off. They'll be out when they finish the dinner, you know what I mean? Just leave us alone. And then Katie goes, we use internet time as and gaming as like a positive reinforcement rather than free access. Does she mean, well, if you behave, you can use the internet. If you do this, you can use the internet. Is that what she means by positive reinforcement? Hmm. Makes me wonder. That did make me wonder when I was talking that for Positive reinforcement rather than free access. I think he was only allowed to go on the internet with his mother to play kiddies things, kiddies games. Yeah? Because, and it was only if he'd done what he, to, he was told he, to do, and he didn't play up, he didn't have a strap. So she was treating him like a six-year-old. She really was. Right? 
And then he goes, Katie, can you walk us through, walk us through for anyone that's new to this case? Well, I'm sorry, after 21 days, if someone come up to me now and say, oh, what's this about? I'll be going, where the hell have you been? If I lived in America and someone said to me after five months, this is 21 days. But even so, after 21 days, it'd be, where have you been? It's been missing 21 days. It's been all over the internet. It's all over the Facebook pages. It's all on Instagram, TikTok, you name it, it's there. Where have you been? Yeah? And she goes, yeah. Sunday morning, I'll just start at the morning, Sunday morning. We got up and we made a fun breakfast for us. Spaghetti pancakes. We FaceTimed family while we were eating so we could brag about brag because that's something he likes to do. So does she not cook very often? Does he like to go, oh, look, mom, my mum's cooked my breakfast. Oh, you know what I mean? Does she not cook very often then? After breakfast, we got a call to go pick up our niece and take her to meet up. So we did. Uh, did that. We went and picked her up. And we met a mum at BJ's, where there was family members. We came home and put our groceries away. And then a little bit later, we went to the bowling alley and we played games. And this is just Bubba. Now, she calls him Bubba, okay? And I went to the dinner, to the diner, dinner, diner, just the two of us. We went to dinner, just the two of us. And then we come home. He took the trash out, because that's his chore. And he come in and he's playing in his room until bedtime. Now, my grandson, when he's at home, his bedroom's like his safe, like his safe place. It's where he can go and just chill out, be on his own, away from all the noise and everything else, right? But when he's here, he used to do it a lot. It being his bed in their bedroom or my bedroom, a hell of a lot. And about a month, two months ago, I said, Ellis, why do you sit going in the bedroom? She know you can come in here. You can come in here with your tablet. You know what I mean? You can sit in the living room and watch your tablet. I don't mind. His parents didn't mind him doing it at home. It's just that his tablet would be really loud. And all I'd ask is, just turn your volume down. Now, I ask him that, and he turns it down, no problem. He'll do it. Just turn it down. So he sits in the living room, but now I've had, like, because I've got a balcony, which is an enclosed-in balcony with windows that goes around. Now I've sorted my balcony out and got my table in here and my laptop in here and all this lot in here. He likes to come in here now and sit at the table or sit on the floor watching his tablet. I'd rather him being here than in the bedroom. Because I just feel he's isolating himself in the bedroom. But he feels he feels comfortable in here, which is fine. I'll just move my laptop out of the way, push it to the back of the table so we can sit here. And he loves sitting here now. And I don't know what's going to happen when my granddaughter comes next time because she likes sitting here as well. And he likes his time alone. So I'm going to have some arguments, I think, there. Anyway, so he's playing in his room until bedtime. And at bedtime, you know... <coughs> Sorry. Oh, God. Sorry about that. All right. Yeah. And at that time, you know, I told him, I said, hey, Bobby, it's time you go to go to bed. And he goes, okay, good night, Mama, I love you. And then he said, good night to his puppies, and he went to bed. Now, I don't know about you. My kids would go up to their bedrooms about once they come in on the night time and everything, and got changed and washed and everything. They'd go up to their beds, depending on be the summer, they may be out till 9pm, half eight, nine, but they'd be in the back garden. 
They was allowed to stay out till like nine, but they had to be in the back garden. Come about 7.30, 8, 7.30, I wanted them in the back. Right? And their friends would go home or end up staying at mine, whatever. And they'd go up their room, then about ooh, nine-ish. My daughter would probably do her homework, if not before then. She'd probably start doing her homework a bit before then. But by nine o'clock, they were all settled down in their rooms, <laughs> watching TV or listening to music. That was fine. Right? But I can't, I couldn't see my 15 year old going to sleep at nine o'clock. No, not happening. Not going to happen. Uh. We didn't find any signs of the wind. Oh, right. Do you have any thoughts about Sebastian's disappearance? Do you feel that he may have walked off? I've seen a lot of people say, in chat say, that you found the door locked. He went out the window. Versus, he went out the door. How did the poor door get locked? Can you walk me through exactly what he looks like, what that looks like? Was the door locked? What do you think may have occurred in walking off versus? Well, I'll tell you this with someone. We didn't find any signs of the windows, but I am without disclosing the details on my door locks. I will say Sebastian regularly and consistently went out and locked the door behind himself because the front door was one of these key codes and if it's one of these key codes normally as, you sh as it should you just hit one button and it'll lock the door on the outside you don't need key but then to get back in you need to punch the code in I want one of them right uh But, uh, but there's some questions here that I find intriguing. Oh, oh yeah, this is where he gets a bit mad. He goes, someone, uh, where is it? Right, someone was obviously talking about the DV charges. So he mentioned, Sebastian's afraid of me. Well, that is a loaded question because somebody who has released some information out there from another show who I won't put his name out there allows somebody to say something. Now, mind you, when you have a teen out, child, and it always goes back to this point. Right, like when you're disciplining a child, it'll always go back to this point. I notice this. Right. Uh, like it's going to like because young. Oh yeah, children. Right. Uh, say something you know, mind. You, when you have a teenage child or teenage children or parents know this, your children are not going to like you because you're not there to be their best friend. You're there to be a parent, and as parents, you have rules. They have to follow, and if they don't, there's consequences. Sebastian will say, one day he's upset and mad at me for something, and 20 minutes later, he'll be running, throwing his arms around me, saying he's sorry. I could quite believe that. Could that be something his mum said to him? Go and say sorry to Chris. And as he called him, Mr. Chris. Sebastian apparently called him Mr. Chris. Not Chris. 
not dad. He had his dad. His dad was Seth. Right, so he used to call him Mr. Chris. Yes, Mr. Chris. Yes, Mr. Chris. Yeah, we know he told him to call him that. But he goes on about um, the court court hearings he has, and I thought, but we know the truth. We've heard Nina side the story, so we know the truth. I'm sorry, but I believe Nina. And I was starting typing up that transcript, but then someone's. Whoever it is, has took it down. It's not even in my downloads no more, so it must have been privated. Right? <coughs> I can't get into it. <coughs> this is another favourite saying. I'm going to make this crystal clear for everybody. There's something that can be spoke of, and there's some things that will not be spoke of. Right? And now we know what that is. Right? Because the question was, Chris, is there any reason why you don't want Sebastian around your daughter? Now, Chris... Did it say so in here? Why? We know why. And he was holding this over Seth's head, constantly holding it there. He said to Seth, if they don't stop asking me questions about why I don't want my daughter around Sebastian, I will tell them exactly about your son. And then no one will want to look for your son. Right? In so many wise words. So, Seth is hanging off of this being held over his head. Right? Because he wasn't saying the truth. He was hold, hiding that. Right? And he thought, he thought that when Seth had mentioned that the fact that his, his son got a side when he was seven years old and the reason uh, CP didn't want Sebastian around his daughter was because he thought he'd do the same to his daughter. What happened to him, he'd do the same to his daughter. That's why he didn't want Sebastian around his daughter. Right? Which doesn't make any sense. This is a lad that has seven got aside, but didn't get the correct help for quite a while. Quite a while he didn't get the correct help to get over that. He's 15 and his dad was had him seeing, had him in therapy. Right? Uh, where he'd see he was going to go to like, I don't know, counselling or something like that. So for the first year, he was going to have him online schooling so that he could get the help and the therapy he needed so that he can then transition back into school. And But what I get so annoyed is, he said, and for the record, I'll say this, all three parents have an agreement and we all understand that this, that, can be said, right, meaning they're not going to talk about why they don't want Sebastian round his daughter, hmm, but you kept threatening Seth, didn't you, Chris kept threatening Seth, because people were so hooked up on that thing, why doesn't he want his daughter around Sebastian, you know what I mean, he's got autism, it's not catching. I could not understand why he would not want his daughter around Sebastian. So, oh, 
hold on. And that's why Seth come out with it. And they say he should never kiss say he should never have said that, he should never come out and say that. He said it because he was fed up of UCP of holding it over him constantly, phoning him and saying, if you go get them to shut up about why stop asking me questions about why I don't want my daughter around your son. He even told, CP even said to the grandmother, Seth's mother, Sebastian's grandmother, called him a pedo to the grandmother. You know what I mean? That isn't right. Chris did not like Sebastian. In here, it goes a question, uh, why was the sheriff's office called and not 911? And Chris says, our house is not designated for city limits, which, juris which jurisdiction for police on site city limits. The sheriff's department is what governs our area because we're outside of that. So if we call 911, you're outside of those areas. It goes to a central point. But then they will turn around and ask you your location and then redirect you to another dispatcher. All right. Well, he couldn't call 911, could he? Because he was making the call. And if he could make the call, they had to track where he was. So they didn't want to be tracking where he was. All right. So he says he calls the sheriff's office. Now, Weeks and weeks ago, I found some information out and it showed uh, the times that the sheriff's office is open. And the sheriff's office does not open till 8 a.m. in the morning. Well, this is what, 20 past 6 in the morning? He's phoning the sheriff's office. And I'll tell you now, because he phoned the sheriff's office, it got put through to dispatch, dispatch it anyway. All right? Got put through to a dispatcher because that's what the call was. The dispatch call was released. And I can tell you now, Chris was not happy about that. You could hear it in his voice after that call was released. Someone asked him about it and he went, yeah, hmm, sort of thing. He did not like that that dispatch call was released. Because he said he phoned at 20 past 6. His back school says he come through at 6.34, 6.33, something like that. Literally 15, 20 minutes later than what he said. And another thing is, why couldn't Katie phone? I don't care if she's incoherent. She's the mother. She's the one at home. This is the home her son has gone missing from. She should have been on that call, not Chris. Right? I don't care if you're a blubbering wreck and you can't get your words out clearly. They will get the information off you eventually and you'll get them out to you. Right? Or was she not in the area? I want to know, did anyone, because I'm still not sure about the neighbours. They say they're seeing her outside and blah, blah, this and whatever. I was wondering, <coughs> <coughs> could she have been coming back from Memphis? Right? And that's why... Neither of them phoned 911. And because when she got back, she was fully dressed. Now, I'm sorry, but you get up in the morning, yeah? You go through to wake your children up. You then wake your children up, and perhaps while they're having breakfast, you go and get showered or dressed, okay? And then, when they've done that, you come back and you, if they're little ones, 
Right, so little ones, and you, you can forget about getting a shower in the morning. Forget about it. You have to wait until they've gone to school and then have one. <laughs> and, um, but she was fully dressed now. If I got up and my son was not in his room, and within minutes I'd be on the phone to my husband, who was three and a half hours away, who couldn't do feck all to help. Right. <laughs> Where, and then while she's on that phone call to her husband, she then jumps in her car and drives around. Yep. Did anyone actually see her go out of that house in the car? But I'm sure that would have been caught on the doorbell, ring doorbell across the road. So, you know, that, that's gone out their head, hasn't it? You will be seeing her coming back and then going out again. Unless the only way I can think of is perhaps it didn't perhaps she did come back from somewhere and I don't know. I'd have to look into this a bit more. I haven't done much research on this case, to be honest with you. But not since for a few months now. Because no information is coming out. And um, they said the police were there within minutes, within 10 minutes. Yeah, it says here, such and such, because I don't put the names of whoever asks the question. Not if it's in chat question. Wants to ask you if Sebastian could have been sneaking out prior without you all knowing. And in the background, Katie whispers something. I couldn't quite catch it. That's why I've got it in brackets. Katie whispers in background. And Chris goes, I'd like to. I'm going to. I'd like to say no. And the reason why I say that is not Sebastian. He's not a child. That goes outside without at outside any at any point in time without telling someone probably something. Well, how do you know? How do you know? How do you know he's not going out before in the night? Right? How do you know he's not made a friend while he's been walking around the estate? And he's come across or going down to, what was that, Culver's? Culver's? He knows his way there. Perhaps he's made his way down there. Yeah? So, and he's met someone. How do you know? How did I know that could not have happened? A child is not going to say, oh, by the way, last night, Mum, I sneaked out my bedroom. It's not going to tell you. So how do you know? And, but listen to this. Oh, God, where is it? Oh, God, I've just lost it. Now, now yeah. Oh. Right. But then Katie says something like zero knowledge. And I'm sitting there thinking, zero knowledge? What does she mean by zero knowledge? And then Chris goes, yeah, if it happened, we don't know about it. But our neighborhood is very small subdivision. It's not huge. And everyone here looks out for everybody. We all watch to make sure everything's kosher in the neighborhood. Well, obviously you don't. Because you've got no house cameras. You've got no ring doorbell. You've got no house cameras. Security, nothing. So you're not looking out on your neighbour's houses and making sure their houses are fine. Right? So just because the neighbours haven't reported anything doesn't mean... Like... 
if I if I was a neighbour across the road and I was seeing a fifteen year old climbing out of his bedroom window and then climbing back in an hour or so later. All right, on my ring doorbell. <laughs> I'd be going typical teenager there, look, sneaking out. Would I go over and tell his parents? No. Unless he's causing damage that I knew of somewhere, then no, he's a typical teenager. Right, I want this bit. Okay, and it says, do you have camera footage in your home? This is some information, huh? This is some information that we cannot divulge at this moment due to the ongoing investigation. Uh, why? Why can't you divulge any, the fact that you have or you haven't got any cameras? That doesn't make sense to me. And he always supports everything. Well, it all depends on law enforcement. It all depends on law enforcement. If we can say this, say that. Have you got law enforcement wiping your backside? Aye. But. Camera, right. But there's something he said. And it might be in this section. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did Sebastian have a key to the house? And if he did, did he take that key with him? Chris, that is another part of an investigation that's ongoing that we cannot answer. On gone, on gone, on gone. You also adamantly went out the front door. Yeah. And. The front door is a code lock, so you don't need a key for that. So was there another door that wasn't locked, or was locked, but the key's not missing, the key's missing? Could they have gone out with the key, took the key out the door and locked the back door or the garage door or something could you took that key with him open the door and then locked it again as he gone out because you're saying he went out the front door which is a no key it's a door pack a lock uh, a, a pad number pad Right. Uh. Right. That. I'll oh, just stop right away. <laughs> the talk about the polygraph. Did you take a polygraph? Host. He said he passed it, according to. Somebody asked the question, was the polygraph taken or has it been passed? Yes. I didn't specify who or when, but what I can tell you, everything has been vetted. See, he doesn't answer the question. He is not answering the question. The question was, did you take the polygraph? Yes or no? Yes. Fine. Did Katie take a polygraph? Yes or no? Yes. Fine. But it doesn't, it goes, I didn't specify who or when, 
But what I can tell you, everything has been vetted completely. Polygraphs have come back as passed. So I'm confused as in why they are all wondering if myself, my wife and the bio biological father took one. When law enforcement agencies has come out and told get one, even the, team, the TBI in Newland, if you guys haven't read that, please go out and read that. Like it's got a lot of information on it, especially probably the most up-to-date information. Right? Uh, so it doesn't, and he goes on about the F, the, the TBI information that's that they actually went through before he come on here and done a lot done this interview. And um, we know the biological father didn't take one because he's told us because apparently law enforcement told him he didn't need to take one because they knew where he was. They've got video evidence of him being at work from. 6.30 or 7 a.m., uh, 7 p.m. the night before to 7 a.m. the get morning after. They've got all that. So they didn't need him to take a polygraph test. Katie took one because apparently Seth was not happy that she took one. Hmm. Makes him look bad now because he didn't take one. Right. Why is it up there? So before we go any further, we'll go back and read this. Is he never I've had questions about? This is about supposedly Sebastian's grandmother spoke out. Right. Um, and he does address this. He does address about that first time the grandmother spoke out. And she's angry, and I can understand. I would be. You know what I mean? If I knew what she knew, I would be angry. It goes. I will address it. Like I said, somebody's refusing to address something that shows suspicion. Yes, it does, doesn't it, Chris? So you're refusing a lot of questions because you keep saying part of the investigation. Part of the investigation, or tipper, or this, or that. There's lots of questions you don't answer. But you keep saying, give us the hard questions. We give you the hard questions. Can't answer that question. Grandmother, which is Seth's mother, Robin, is it right? What I can say, that is simple. Like I said, see, he goes back again. She going, like I said earlier in the podcast, kids are going to say things they're going to get upset because you're the parents and they don't like your answers. Sebastian has said, like I said before, the same thing about his biological father. But when you all sit down, your kids sit when you sit your kids down and explain to them that being a parent, you have to do things they don't like. Unfortunately, it is what is true. You do have to do things that your kids are not going to like. Right? Like, eat those greens up. Get your dessert if you don't eat your dinner up. Oh, bollocks. See, I, I never, like my grandchildren, I eat their dingers, depending on what it is. But I would never say to someone, you can eat it all up. Because I don't eat all my meals. I don't. Sometimes, sometimes I do. Like when I've been at my son's, he's, good, he's doing a lovely roast dinner. And I've, yes. That's just come down a treat. So, it's just re reverting back to what he said about how kids don't like you be being told what they can and cannot do. And because of that, Sebastian's gone and told these things to his grandmother. But we know now that what he said to his grandmother isn't about not being not being allowed to do something or say something. It's about how you 
reacted to him about how you disciplined him. That's what it's about. So it's got nothing to do with what you said or any... Um, what am I saying? Any rules and whatever that you've set in the house. It's got nothing about that. It's about the way you've treated him. That's what he's told to his grandmother. He wouldn't tell his father because he knew what his father would do. And he didn't want his father acting out and losing his job. Because he knew what his father would do. It's like my kids, they know what I would do if anything happened to my grandkids. They know exactly what I'd say if anything happened to my grandkids. You know what I mean? Where the hell was she? Why wasn't you watching them? There's two of you. Why wasn't you watching them? You know what I mean? That's how I am with my grandkids. They like my babies. They are my babies. But I'm more protective of... I was protective of my own kids. Don't get me wrong. I knew exactly where my kids were. And there's one time they went off without telling me something and they got grounded. They didn't do it again. Hi. And, um, but, I don't know, I'm just so more overprotective of my grandkids. I don't know why. Right, so it just uses that whole thing, and it wasn't about being having to do this or not being able to do that or whatever. It was about what Sebastian told his grandmother was about the discipline. And we all know now how he disciplined Sebastian. We all know now that he used a belt on him, and not once, at least twice to our knowledge. Right? Because when you question him about that bout incident, he goes on about when he was younger, right? But then, in another interview, he goes on about how embarrassed he was, a 15-year-old lad being embarrassed. Also, he was 15 when you used the belt on him as well. You know what I mean? So... And um, they go, they mention how they've been on searches, but they've not been on searches. He corrects himself here. He go, uh, where is it? This, I think, is a shame. This bit here. They talk about him, how his friends, if anyone was nice to him, spoke to him, he classed him as a friend. He didn't have friends where he could say, oh, I'm going over to such and such, I'm going to go and play footy, I'm going to do this. You know what I mean? No. He was in that house from the moment he got home from school to the moment he went out again in the morning to school. He's hardly ever outside. You know, but like I said, you never seen a bike out there. You never seen, uh, well, bikes and bikes you could probably use because you wear helmets which will protect your head. Skateboards would wear helmets to protect his head. But you never seen any toys or anything like that outside to show that a child lived in that house. Right? And he goes, he doesn't have friends like most kids that would go ha and hang out with him because of his social awkwardness. 
very difficult for him to make friends and he actually has. This, I think, is wrong, what it says here. Right, I'll highlight that. And he actually asks for Christmas. You know when you ask him what you want for Christmas? He, I just want friends. That's, that's sad. You know what I mean? That is so sad. He oh. uh, does not associate with kids that can drive, so I wish... Right. He didn't have no one. Uh, right. Someone said, does he have the same rules that his dad has? And Chris goes, no, ma'am, I don't believe so. We respect like what he does at his dad's house under his dad's roof. So we do stay in communication as far as like his behaviour. Hey, this is what's going on. This is the punishment he's received. It's up to you if you want to continue. Well, Seth has said they would say they didn't like the fact that he was on the internet. That Seth would let him go on the internet. But Seth would be on there with him, watching him, sitting by the side of him. He never had headphones, so he couldn't talk to anyone. He just played the games, and he played on his dad's um, logging. And his dad was there watching him. He knew exactly what he was up to. As I said, you don't need to completely cut a child off from the internet, right? You monitor them. And if, if, say, they're coming out with certain words, then you say, all oh, right, no more internet for you. No more. Well, not so much internet, but no more of this one app or whatever. You're not using it no more. Right? But they didn't. They just isolated them so much from anything, from internet, online, anyone. Yeah, people who are so socially awkward, they, they make friends online more than they would elsewhere, right? And as you, I read before, his mum would use the internet as a positive reinforcement. Like, if you've been good, if you're good, you can go and play this game later. You can go on and do this activity online later. It's like a positive You've got to behave, though, otherwise you won't get online. No. No. A child can learn so much as well from being online. Christ, my one grandson, he knows about how to change a flipping tyre on a car. He's six years old. He knows how to change a tyre on a car. He was telling his dad the other week. And his dad was pulled up at his life saying, How do you know how to change a tyre on a car? Because he watches things on YouTube, videos on YouTube. And I was watching one with him. He's sitting on the floor and he's watching something. And I, I got engrossed watching it with him. I go, wow. That, that's something. Oh, I didn't know about that. And he talks about the mushroom cloud. Now, if anyone knows about the mushroom cloud, it's the, when a nuclear bomb goes off and you see this big, Poof of smoke going up in the air, then it's like a big mushroom head at the top. That's what he calls a mushroom cloud. He's six years old. He goes on about meat, uh, meteorites and things like that. He gonna hit us thing. We need to get under shelter, we need to do this, and we need and I play along with him a lot when I'm walking along the road with him. And I must admit, people must think I'm, nut I'm nutty. Well, I am. But I'll go, Gran, cover! And we literally are diving into these doorways 
of a church or a shop or something like that. Or I'll go, Grang, duck. And I'm walking along the road, ducking down. I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> I'm all right. I'm not that completely lost it yet. I'm just playing with my grandson. Right? So, but, Okay, uh, let's have a look. How long have I been on here now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to... Right, I'm flipping through this. Uh... But you notice in that interview, she didn't say anything about, you know, when you went to bed. She never mentioned anything about hearing him in the bedroom and calling through to him. Not a word was mentioned about that. And that was after 21 days. And it was only after that that people was questioning, oh, God. So you didn't go in and check on your son at all that night? Right? Not even when you, before you went to bed, you didn't go in and just make sure he was asleep and he was okay. Right? He's an autistic lad. He's got chromosome thing problem. He's got a, a fluid on the brain, which if he hits hard, gets hit hard, and that spot can kill him. Right. But she never mentions anything about him in in, in the in the bedroom. Look at in that interview. Believe me, I know she's whispering, but I would have heard that. Right. Uh... Right, so oh, no. oh, there was a question I can't find you. Someone said, "Did Sebastian ever go to the building site, the construction site?" And he said, "No, I'm trying to find it now." No, that one young applied. Uh -huh. Um, just trying to find that question. Uh, I'm glad that you can help. Uh -huh. Right, and if you've noticed, Chris and Katie have been very quiet over the summer, hot, summer, and as you probably guessed, it's because he's got his daughter. Fight, playing happy families are we, Katie, with your stepdaughter? No, you haven't got your son. Hmm. Uh. Right, here's one. 
someone asked, are there any abandoned or empty homes in your area close to you? And Chris goes, there's a construction site and you have a subdivision. That's, oh, that's a spelling error by me. Building right next door to our subdivision. All of those houses and everything over there have been thoroughly searched. Now, I know for a fact, on that uh, police uh, call, right, one officer said he spoke to the manager of the site, the site manager, and the site manager said he'll put the word out to all his workers and to keep an eye out for any discrepancies, and if they find anything, they'll let them know. So did they do a search or not? I don't believe they did search any of them empty houses. Because it said, the site manager said, if they find any discrepancies, I'm going to, I'll do another live, and I'm going to do it about that uh, dispatch call. Right? Because the, it said on there, and I heard it on the phone, Oh, God, so you're not doing a search of them empty houses. You're relying on the workers there to come back to you if there's any discrepancies. Hmm? Right, so... Uh, ooh. Let's see. Oh, here's another one. It was from one of the panel, right? She goes, I know you've already answered that, that they took your devices, the computer and stuff that Sebastian used. That is biological gags. Did they take that as well? Chris says, Yes, ma'am. Everything has been completely between both households. Everything has been extremely thoroughly scanned, reviewed, everything. And then, but then Chris goes, If they want to come back and get more devices, we like I said, we've opened this house up to everyone. What do you mean, more devices? What devices have they not had, Chris? If they've already took all the devices, why would they need to come back and get more devices? Yeah. Come on. Oh, God, I'll try that colour then. No, I don't want that kind of... Okay. See what I mean? That it's, it goes, yes, ma'am, everything has been completely... Hold on, let me highlight this. Let me highlight this. No, that's not coming up, is it? Uh, let's try that kind of... Right. It goes, yes, ma'am, everything has been completely between both households. Everything has been extremely thoroughly scanned, reviewed, everything. The host goes, okay, well, that's good to know. They took the devices from the bio house too. But then Chris goes, oh, let's see if I can change that. If they want to come back and get more devices, what devices? What devices do, have they not took? Have you got a second phone? Or another computer, a laptop somewhere? A tablet? Because what devices would they need? If they took everything and thoroughly scanned and reviewed everything, if they want to come back and get more devices, so what devices?
Right. Then you get the house goes. Oh well, I'm gonna. Next. Come on. Oh. You and Katie have been out to do some searches yourself and hang up flyers. Is that true? Can you tell us a little about that? Well, they haven't been out searching. Right, and Chris goes, Yes, we have gone out numerous places and hung up flyers. We've got them with motorcycle chapters and groups and got a lemon ball. I understand that, I do believe if you can get a uh, someone in a group a, mo a motorcycle group and they travel all over the united states they don't stay in one state they go everywhere right if you can get them to take flyers and stick them up anywhere where there isn't a flyer then that's great you know what i mean so i'm not gonna knock them on that i'm really not Oh, oh, come on. Let's get this off. Ah. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is funny. She goes, Sick. Your dogs barked during your first TV interview. Wouldn't they barked when Sebastian walked out the door? No, because they know Sebastian when they barked in the first interview because a stranger was in the house. Right. And then Katie comes up with this. Now, bear in mind, and they're sitting in the wherever, in the house or wherever. Right. There's no one in there but them. Hi. Katie goes, they've been sitting here, right here, the entire time. Well, there's no one in there at the moment. Is there, sweetheart? So they're, go they're not going to bark. How stupid. You know what I mean? They've been sitting here the whole time. But there's no one in the house. So I'm just eating a bit of chocolate, eating a little bit of aero strawberry. And it's really nice. You said there was, uh, they asked if you had any flashlights that were missing. And that prompted you to go and look. Tell me about that. <laughs> this was before that video of the lights came out. Uh -huh. So 
Someone said about the initial press release where it was said that Sebastian Lowe is now playing. I think what it was said, though, they said something like Sebastian was more active during the night than during the day. He like, was more active during the night. Not that he stayed up late. If he was up, if he was awake, he was awake. He was more active. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of children with autism do have a thing with loud noises. My grandson, he... he he can't cope with his his sister constantly moaning and crying. <laughs> he really can't. He goes to his bedroom. He has to go to his bedroom. He can't cope with it. Oh. What? Shush. Don't want to hear that, that's Toby. Um. Uh, yeah, someone did ask. They kept wanting to know how long Chris and Katie had known each other. To be honest with you, I don't think that means anything. But he answered that with a question. So my question to whoever's asking that is, what do does that have to do with the investigation of our son? True. Right? Um, yeah, okay, you said that you couldn't have gone out the window, that all of that was checked. Yeah, I was trying to find that bit about how you gone out the window, and I couldn't find it. At all in this transcript. I've gone over every word. I've typed it so I know if it was there. Mm hmm. Oh, go on, try and find that bit about the construction sites. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. The talk about him being playing outside, right? Now, this was a bit confusing to me. Um, 
He didn't go outside very much most of the time. I don't know. All the neighbours will tell you if they saw him, he was taking a trash out. He may have cut, cut the grass. But was always, right? Prefer Katie. Prefer to play. He prefers to play inside. And then he, Chris goes, well, he prefers inside in playgrounds. And she goes, yeah, he does love playgrounds. So that's outside. Right? So would you not, like, if I had a child, like, I'd have a build, a uh, climbing frame out there for them. Anything to run that, work their energy off. I mean, but you see, with Sebastian, you had to be careful that he didn't bang his head. At one point, Seth did join in, in the chat. He wasn't a pump panel. He was. Apparently, he said he didn't want to go pump panel. Which is fair enough. He wasn't into doing these interviews then. He really wasn't. I'm trying to, I'm still trying to focus on it. Find that question. Well, listen, how can I? Oh, yeah, I found you. Question, had Sebastian ever played played or been interested at the construction site before? Chris, no, he's never gone to that construction site. We have drove around the construction site in the car, but no, he's never been on foot. He's never wandered over there. I mean, I understand where they're going with that, but, you know, unfortunately, there's not any chance that he would have had that kind of interest. But then again, at the same time, dog scent were found in this construction zone. And then they disappear, you know. I mean, it's a hit or, hit or miss. Well, I'm sorry, but this is how he said it, and I'm having to read it back because I typed it as he said it. Now, I know for a fact, and I'm going to do a live, probably it's Monday today, isn't it? Probably Friday. I might just do a little video on that about the uh, construction site because when it, the police went to that um, subdivision and was talking to the neighbours there, asking them if they'd seen Sebastian, one of the neighbours said, because this is the police officer reporting, stating that they had seen Sebastian in that area before, just not that Monday, just not that day. They had seen him before walking around, just not that day. So he had been there. So Chris, you don't know everything. He's been there.
Like, I'm sorry, but he gets home from school, what, four o'clock? Yeah, maybe. He has to come home, do his few chores, maybe do his homework. But in that time, his mum was normally at work. And she could work till 6, 7 p.m. How do you know? How do they know he didn't go out for a walk around that construction site? Right? He got all his chores done. He got any homework done. He thought, I'm just going to nip out. Oh, I'll nip out now for a half an hour. I'll just have a look around. Then I can come back and get my homework done. And when his mum's coming in, he's getting his homework done. Just finishing his homework. You know what I mean? So how do they know? How could they say he's never gone to that construction site? And I will do a live. No, I'll do a video on that um, dispatch call and point out everything along with what I've along with these little clips on here that I've highlighted today. There is so much more. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. uh -huh. That is basically the the hope the some of the points that I found that caught my attention. Like, hmm, no, no, that isn't right. That is not right. We've got proof on that dispatch call of at least two discrepancies of what he said in that interview. Right. And the fact that the dogs didn't bark was about, uh, because, well, they've been by our side all night, they've not barked. As I just said, they've not barked. No, they're not going to bark while you're on a phone call or on YouTube, whatever, on your laptop doing an interview. They're not going to bark, are they? Not like my cat who likes to sit there moaning at me all night long. But they're not going to bark. And it's the way she spoke. She speaks so soft and so gently. But then I've seen another side to Katie in that interview she did on Smiley's World when she first came up. Because Smiley wasn't expecting Katie. She was expecting Chris. So Katie come on and was like, no, I'm not happy. Oh, you know what I mean? Don't take it out and Smiley. But it's, it just refers a lot. He, I don't know if you've ever noticed, it doesn't answer. Well, I'm going. Uh, let's find a question. Uh, uh, I'm going to find a question. Where? Is that you? Yeah. I didn't... I literally finished it once they went off. Once they dropped off the panel, I dropped off typing it up because I thought I can't do this no more. I've been on here three hours and we had like another 20 minutes left. Uh... 
Um, right. Let's go on about the description of the item of clothing is wearing. It's like just saying, look, we told them this, this, and this, and they put this, this, and this. We tried to correct them, but they weren't corrected. He didn't do that. He goes, now keep in mind, let's think about the telephone game. Chinese whispers. You tell somebody something, they tell somebody something, it goes back, and by the time it comes back around to you, it is not what you initially started with. That is basically what happened. We told them verbatim what Sebastian went to bed with. But how would you know what he was wearing to bed, Chris? How would you know? what he was wearing to bed. You wasn't there. He wasn't there. So how would he know? This is things like that that make people believe or think that he was there. You know what I mean? Oh. oh yeah. You know when they're talking about apparently it's part of um if a child is having a meltdown some uh how professional people or whoever would say, put that child outside where he can't hurt himself or hurt anyone or break anyone, anything. Right? Now, I don't agree in that. I don't agree with it at all. I say to him, go and take five minutes out. Go to your bedroom and just take five minutes and calm down. Go to your room where you feel safe and secure and calm down. Right? I would never, ever put a child outside if they was having a meltdown. Never, in, that wouldn't even have come into my head. And if anyone had said that to me, a health profession, I would have gone, you need your head looking at love. Do you think I'd put a child outside? No. But people believe that perhaps he was put outside that night. Right? And he was put out with no shoes as a punishment. This is what was first going around. That is a possibility. And perhaps something, perhaps Katie forgot about him. And he died out there, hypothermia. You know what I mean? He's only in a thin t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt top and some like thin trousers. No slippers, no shoes. No Jackie, perhaps he did die outside. And that's when she's realised, oh my God. But then, oh, I'm sorry about that. But then, what is this like situation? What's going on? What do you mean what's going on, Robin? I'm going through the interview they did on the Duchess at 21 weeks, just highlighting certain questions, right, about how, and like how he doesn't answer a question, he, he'll go all the way around it, or dance around it, he doesn't actually go yes or no. Some questions he does, some, a lot of questions he doesn't. 
and how he'll use. I can't answer that question because it's part of the investigation. We only want to know if you was at home at all in January. You know what I mean? Why can't you tell us when you was at home in January? And things like that. And I've highlighted several things. Right, and where's that one? Here, right. Let's see if I can highlight it even better. I don't know if that helps, that colour. Uh... Right. Someone asked if he'd ever been to the construction site before. You think Sebastian drugged, uh, Katie drugged Sebastian and then they freaked out. That is a possibility. But nowhere, right? I'm going to take you right back. Uh, right back to when she talks about the day, right? Oh, God. Right. Because she does not say anything. About hearing in a noise. Right, and the way she talks about him, like I said, she talks about him as though he's like a six or seven year old. You know what I mean? Like you, what they did as activities, uh, things like that. Right, here it is. Right, it's on the screen here. Yeah. I'll just highlight the name for now because, right, yeah, Sunday morning, I'll just start at the morning, right, and she goes on about a fun breakfast, spaghetti pancakes, I don't know what spaghetti pancakes are, don't even know, how the FaceTime family, because they like to brag, because obviously his mum didn't do breakfast very often. Right, after breakfast, they went and picked up the niece, they went to BJ's, we came home, put our groceries away, and went out to get a little bit later, and went out to the bowling alley, and we played the games, and then and this is just bubbling up, and it was just round here, it was just round here, this square section here, I couldn't hear it properly. I could not hear it properly, but Chris whispers something to Katie because it throws her off. Remember in that one interview when he coughed, she was going on about something and then he goes, <coughs> and then she goes, and with one, two, and she's using the table to count up to three to, to get her back on track as a three-way phone call. Well. He whispered something to her there, where he said, we went to the bowling alley, and we play games. And then she goes, and this is just bubble, bubba, hang on. Hi. Well, who else would it be? If you'd gone home already to drop your groceries off, right? And, um... 
then you went bowling. So who else is going to be with you? Get in the park in the garage no more. To be honest with you, Robin, I haven't been keeping up with this case because um, I've been looking at other cases. But I did hear someone say a while ago, a few weeks ago, about how they got parking in the garage and they're parking on the driveway. This is what I've said. I can't understand. Right? I can't understand. If if this was a lad that was going to run away from who? Yeah? He's very clever. We know this. Would he not have thought... If he's planned it out so well to not even leave a footprint or a scent of his scent anywhere, if he's planned it out that well, why didn't he plan it out to take a coat, shoes, money, phone? Why didn't he plan all that? All right, I'm going to have to start diving back into this because I know there's been a lot of searches going on. Um, but a lot of the guys, when I have been watching anything, they're just going over. Okay, really? Really? Okay. But I did hear about them ages ago, a while ago, about how she parks on the drive now. But he does, he whispered something to her, and that's when he said, and that was just Bubba and I. Right? Now, we'll go back to this a minute because that's something I wanted to show you, right? We went to dinner, just the two of us, and then we come home. He took the trash out because that's his cure. He come in and he was playing in his room until bedtime. And at bedtime, you know, I told him, I said, Hey, Bubba, it's time to go to bed. And he goes, OK, good night, Mama. I love you. And then he said good night to his puppies and went to bed. Right. And um and even here. My husband, he works out of town a lot, so we normally sit and talk every evening. And I'll normally fall asleep on him. And he'll know, and he'll, and he, he will, he will, you know. He'll tell me, wake up, you know. You've got to go to bed. And that was right around midnight. She's got to make us all believe she was in bed at midnight. She, she, she's pushing that midnight. Right? So I go up, put the puppies up and went to bed myself at midnight. And you know, I went to sleep, obviously. And at 6am, I woke up to get him from school and that's when I couldn't find him. Right? Where in those two paragraphs did, that like I've just read out, does she mention anything about hearing a noise in his bedroom at 10 o'clock or calling through to him? And saying, I don't know what you're doing in there, but you better get to sleep. Nothing. And that was like three weeks. So it was after all this that she starts adding in the fact that, well, it was, I heard a noise in his bedroom, right, bump. Then, so you didn't go and check on him. So then she goes, but I called through to him and said, was that you falling out of Bubba? So this was all after three weeks that she started to add all this little bit of information on. Because don't forget, they never spoke for nearly, what, a week? So for the first two weeks, first week, they didn't say nothing. Then the first two weeks is when she was doing the first interview with the judges. Then she did, they did an interview, who was it? Was it Smiley? No. 
Uh, the news with real people. Then I believe she did smileys. What well, smileys after this? No. Right? And then she did this one. And then they also did the one with... Uh, can't think of a game. Chronicles of Olivia. So they did quite a few interviews. Exactly. Why would she say just the two of us? It doesn't make... This is why I've typed all this out and I've... It's, it's it nearly turned me to drink. It really did. And there'd be times where I couldn't type it up for... I'd have to leave it out for a few days. Because the thought of sitting and listening to his voice. No. Right? But I I typed it all up so that way I could... If I could see something visually, right, I click onto it more. Because sometimes I have to listen to it, then listen to it again, and then listen to it again. And it might be the third or fourth time of listening to it that I actually catch on to what they've just said. But, but why would, you wouldn't say that, would you? But it was round about here, she said so she come home and put our groceries away, and then a little bit later, we went to the bowling alley, local, a local bowling alley, and we played games. And it was round about this section here when Chris whispered something to her. And that's when she went, uh, you know, as she stutters, right? She kind of lost track of what she was saying. And she goes, and this is just Bubba and I. And we went to dinner, just the two of us. Well, who else is it going to be, Katie? You, Sebastian and the dustman, the milkman. The newspaper man? Who else? Who else is likely to go to dinner with you? Being as you don't have friends, right? You've just seen all your family all day earlier on, so they've all gone home. You don't socialise. Uh, what else? You don't go out anywhere. So who else is going to be going to dinner with you, uh, Katie? That's a big red flag. And the fact that he, he's playing in his bedroom, he never played that anywhere else but in his bedroom. Was, I bet that poor lad was in his bedroom from the moment he come home, after he'd done his chores, whatever they was, like to have taken the trash out or whatever. Right? I bet you he was in his bedroom all the time. Yeah, I I think something happened that Sunday night. Definitely something happened. And that is another reason Katie doesn't want to be in that house. That is another reason Katie doesn't want to be in that house because she knows something happened. And... She don't want to be there. Hi. <coughs> so, as I said, and when you're asking questions, he doesn't answer. He dances around the question. And he doesn't actually answer a question. Like when you said um, about robbing... Uh, Rogers, about what she said. What she spoke about was what Sebastian told her. Yep, at the very beginning. And Sebastian had told her some stuff that even Seth did not know about. And he's trying to make out, well, you know what it's like as parents... You've got to set, you say things, you set rules, 
and you set boundaries and the circumstances, if these rules are broken and blah, 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 you're not a friend, you're the mother, you're the stepfather, you know what I mean, all this stuff. I'm thinking, no, no, he's not on about that. He's on about telling his grandmother what you, how you treated him. Not the fact that he didn't like the, the rule that you made him. Like, you've got to put the rubbish out by 8 o'clock every night, or you've got to be in bed by 9.30pm, or you've got to eat all your dinner, or be at the dinner table as soon as we call you. It's nothing like that. Oh, they have been out, they've been to church. Did you not see that photo? There was a photo with Katie holding, like, holding faith in her arms at, at church. But this is the time now to have a go at Chris, because he's not going to say nothing, is he, on YouTube? Get in now while you can, everyone. If you want to have a gig at Chris or Katie, get in now. Because they're not coming. They're not coming on YouTube because they've got the daughter there. That might have been one of the stipulations of him getting his daughter. You do not go on YouTube. You know what I mean? Because I can't believe a judge would give a, the father the even even though it's only for the summer, oh, but you can't guarantee that with Chris and his family, right? I cannot believe a judge has let that go through, knowing that there's another child in that household that has gone missing. Yeah, she'll be going back home soon. Yeah. I don't know what the times are for less your school holidays on in the US because in England it's six weeks and they break up round about is it July? The just before the end of July. Like the last week of July, then they go back like is it the second week into September? Something like that. So they have six weeks. In Scotland, they break up in June, the end of June, and they go back in August. Because that used to throw me when I first moved up to Scotland. I'd go, why have they got all the school uniforms out in the shops already? Schools haven't broken up yet. And then someone said, yeah. They're broken up here in Scotland. I went, no. They break up two weeks before England do. Yeah, because it's this saying here that it gets, um, and this is said uh, something about, uh, he has the during the summer. And at Christmas, it's like divided. But because he had her at Christmas last year, right, I don't think he'll get her Christmas this year because he had her Christmas last year. That's how I'd be saying. Oh, no, 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 no. You had her last year. Christmas is with me. All right. I'm trying to find the
I'm trying to find it. I can't find it now. But August the twelfth. When did I go back here in Scotland? What we are now on July, aren't we? They've had since they have all of July off for. So it's like around about the middle of August they go back. So. But it's right about the middle of August to go back here in Scotland. Because I know they break up two weeks earlier than England. Right. Now I think it's a lot longer because I know when my kids were at school they used to break up round about where up here in Scotland they break up round about the twenty second, twenty third of June. In England, they used to break up the 22nd, around about the 22nd of July. And then go back, around about, uh, around about the 6th or 7th of September. Right? But in here, they break up in June, the end of July, June, around about the 22nd, something like that, of June. Near the end of the month, put it like that. Near the end of the month. And then they have all of August and a couple of weeks. Yeah, so it's around about the middle of August to go back here. It's just too confusing. And then they'll go back and I'll tell you now, they'll have about, what, three weeks at school and they'll have another week's holiday. But, you know, I've just been going through that and what I'm going to do, I'm going to do... I don't know if to do it as a live or a video. Right? I might do it as a live, but it'll only be about an hour long. Because I want to go through the dispatch call. Because I know in that dispatch call, it states how one of the neighbours in that area told the police officer that the... They had seen Sebastian walking around that subdivision. They just had not seen him that day. Yeah, Chris said, Sebastian never went there. Would never go there. Right? Yeah, it's a young, it's a 15 year lad with the age capacity of, say, an 11 year old. He's got to have an interest in the diggers and the building equipment and all that law. He's got to want to see what's going on. So if he can, and I think he did, well, I know he did because there's an either. And then it goes on about was all the houses checked? Right? And. Um, he goes, yes, all the houses were checked thoroughly. Now, I you know in that uh, dispatch call, one of the officer calls through and says, the site manager has said that he will have a word with all of his workers. And if they see anything that doesn't sit right, Right, that looks like a pl out of place. They will let him know and he will get in touch with them. So, oh God, I'm thinking. So, are they telling us they didn't search them houses? They're waiting on the workers to check themselves to make sure there's no inconsistencies, nothing out of place for them to get back to the police. I know that was said because I, I'm thinking, that doesn't sound right. Why would why would they not be searching those houses? So I'm going to, to do it as a video or a short live. I might do it as a live. Yeah, Friday night. 
which is what day we are now. 22nd Friday is the 26th. Yeah, Friday night. I'll go live again. I have to go and pack. I'll be listening. Where are you going, Robbie? Hope it's somewhere nice. Hope it's not Tenerife. I wouldn't advise any, anyone to go to Tenerife at the moment. The police are sus as anything. I don't trust them Tenerife police. If you go missing, you're not going to get found. Especially if you're a young scat, you're not going to be found. If you're an older person, you're more likely going to get found. But if you're a young scat, you're not going to get found if you go missing in Tenerife. Because that's something I've noticed. I was covering a case like Jay Slater. And there was an, an older man who went out on a hike. He was reported as lost, but he wasn't. He wasn't lost. He was just having a break. He just took longer than he should have took to do the hike. Because he was sitting down, enjoying the view. Right? But then, year of... Other cases where youngsters have gone missing in Tenerife and never been found. But then there's another man who had an argument with his wife and went off. But he's got found, I believe. So the older generation people will get found. If you're like 30 plus, you're going to get found. Well, 25 plus, I'd say. You're going to get found. But if you're between 18 and 25, and you go missing, you're not going to be found. So, I don't know what everyone feels about this. I don't like it. Be nice. I just want Sebastian found. It's about time now he was found. And the police, to my knowledge, they may be doing. Working on this, we don't know because don't forget, you remember those case of those two little boys, Oren and Oren or whatever West, who went missing. They've never found their bodies, never. Right, but they built a case against the mother and father, the adoptive mother and father, and put them in jail. So, and it took them two years before they got arrested and charged. So, we could still be looking at this in two years' time. I just hope it doesn't come as Summer Moon Utah Wells case. Where they've got enough proof there of child neglect with Don and Candice. Enough. And they've not even been charged with that. So let's just hope, we can only hope the law enforcement there are doing their job. Because if people say, well, if you keep his name out there and keep pushing it and doing this and doing that, it's going, like, no, they don't care. Law enforcement won't care. They don't care about Summer Moon Utah. Well, so how long has she been missing? Three years. How long have people been looking at that case and talking about her for three years? years the police don't care if they can't find someone they're not going to worry about what someone's saying on youtube you know what i mean that does not bother them and this would be the case with sebastian they do what people say on youtube will not bother law enforcement what will bother them is if someone come up with information where perhaps law enforcement was being dishonest in any way, then that might bother them. If they was being kept quiet, being paid off, and someone had proof of that, then they might that would pull that would take the SHIT would take the fan there, wouldn't he? 
right? But you've got to have proof to back that up. We can't just say, oh, they're being paid off. We don't know that. People say, oh, but the mother's very friendly with such and such shape. That's from another county. That's not some of the county. Right, so we've got to hope and pray that Sebastian, the law enforcement, are on this case. We know the dad is out there searching again. He knows how his operation. He can he can drive. He can do all that himself now. So we can get back out there searching. Right? He will have to go back to work eventually. Now that he can move his arm, once he's been declared fit enough for work, he'll be going back to work. But I can assure you on his days off, he'll be out there searching. Right? So it's just a, a waiting game now. And all we can do, they have been already robbing to, I'll be honest with you, when they first got questioned, they had done it separately. They had took them to the police station and had them in separate rooms. Right? So if there's something not tallying up with hers and his, then they'll phone that. Right? But like I said, without a body, it's very hard to build a case. Right? So it could take a, a year, two years for them to build a case and actually press charges. So it's just a waiting game. And all we can do, all I can do is Every so often, put a video out there, do a live, talk about Sebastian. Show some of his videos that are out there of him. You know what I mean? And just keep his name and picture out there. Because law enforcement don't care what we say. As I said, unless someone's got actual proof that there's... There's some backhanded going on with law enforcement and Chris Pray for all his family, right? And they've got actual proof to show this, then the law enforcement won't care. Right? But I know in that interview there's a lot of whispering going on between Katie and Chris. A lot of whispering. But what I don't understand is how does he know what Sebastian was wearing when he went to bed? He wasn't there. He's only got what Katie's told him. You know what I mean? But it's like, you imagine, put yourself in Katie's shoes, right? Your child's gone to bed. You've said goodnight. You've seen what he's wearing, right? Yeah, look at Summer's case, and that is as corrupt. I tell you now, the head guy on that case is as corrupt as anything, because it, wasn't it the head guy whose son was charged uh, as an RSO? Isn't it his son? The the head police of uh, deputy's son. But I don't care what people say on YouTube. Because that isn't going to convict no one. You need hard evidence to say that are corrupt. They might take him backhanders, they're doing this, they're doing that. But you've got to have hard evidence. You can't just show myself, oh, they're corrupt as hell. I know I have. I've just said it, but I live in the UK. <laughs> So I can say what I like. But Summer's case, they did have they have got the evidence there to prosecute them for child neglect. And it's like people go, Oh, there's a uh there's a watching game where you can't talk about summer moon. Uh 
the children, the brothers, the three lags. We can talk about it then. We can, the YouTubers can. But we don't out respect of the three lags. It's the parents that have got the injunction on. And they are not allowed to talk about the three lags. They are not allowed to. Right, because when they talk about their, their three lags, they talk about the uh, child services kidnapping them. Kidnapping them and all this law. And John's been up in court, I believe, a couple of times now over that. But nothing new has come out on that case. Now, for what? Two years? 18 months to two years? Nothing new. In fact, it's three years and we've had. Uh, that one guy who was there, who they spoke to, he died. You've had Alison pass away. You've had another guy up on the hill, who lived up on the hill. He's passed away. Uh, who else? Oh, and the neighbour, the friend of Alison, right, who was in that interview, with Chris McDonough, she passed away. So there's like four people have passed away since in three years. By the time they get to court with that, them two, there'll be no one around to say anything. You know what I mean? The police have just put this down as another missing child, and that is it. That's how they look at it with Summer Moon. That's how they look at it. But we don't want this to happen to this case. People say it's going cold. It doesn't go cold. They can have up to a year, even two years. A cold case is when they don't have, when they've got no more leads to go anywhere. Why? When they've got no more leads to, to follow. That's when it becomes a cold case. Right, at the moment, they've still got a, quite a few leads, I think, they are following. And because of that, as soon as it went to the investigation, that's when they cut off anything, talking to us about anything. Because whatever they had, they couldn't talk about, they couldn't tell us. So what's the point of talking to us? They can't tell us. So. Oh God, my throat is sore. I've had a, sore, a bit of a sore throat all week. And find it very hard to eat certain foods to swallow. So that's why I haven't really done it. I didn't, yesterday I was supposed to go live last night and I didn't because I got home from taking my grandson home and I come in, I quickly tidied up, quick, just quickly. I went out and done myself uh, some soup and some crusty bread and some toast and whatever. But I couldn't eat the crusty bread, I could only eat the middle of it because that was the softest part. And then I kept falling asleep. And finally, I woke up at one stage. I woke up and it was like 12.30. So I went, I'm going to bed. I went to bed and fell asleep again. And then this morning I got up and I was dozing on and off again on the sofa. But then I woke up this afternoon. I started moving around more. And being a bit more livelier this evening. But I don't know. I don't know where they can go with this case. Are they looking at Chris and Katie? I should hope they are. Because especially Katie. And that garbage truck thing when they said 
about the lights. And I said to that, uh, Nick Bearers, about that video, they said, that video has no bearings on this case. Nick Bearers said something, he said, it has no bearings on this case, but it might do in the future. Right? And that's what question, I question that, thinking, has it got any bearing to the case? Hasn't it got any bearing to the case? You know what I mean? You're telling us it hasn't, but then in the next breath, you're saying, but it might do in the future. So, I want to look at that interview as well. So, I might do, yeah, I'll do a live Friday. And if I've got time, I'll go over that interview. But I want to look at the dispatch call. And go through that bit by bit as to what time the dogs hit on the scent, where the dogs hit on the scent, did they search those houses or did they, as I heard on that call, that they left it to the site manager? Which I think if they did, that is out of order. Because there may not be anything, there may not have been anything of Sebastian in there, but they may have had a scent of him in one of them houses. Perhaps he slept in there during the night. You know what I mean? They don't know because apparently from what I heard on that dispatch call, they was waiting for the just. Uh, the site manager said he'll have a word with all these guys and if there's anything out of place, anything suspicious, they will get back to them. And yet Chris says in this interview, all those houses were searched thoroughly. So that's why I want to go back over that phone call, that dispatch call, just to literally say, well, this is what he said in that interview. And yet on this dispatch call, it's saying this. But that dispatch call come out after these interviews. After. And that's probably why Chris wasn't happy, because he heard that dispatch call. And it dispels some of what he's been saying. So, anyway. It is two hours, but three minutes. I am going to go to bed, well, I have my medication, grab something to eat, a snack, chill out for an hour, and then go to bed. And being as my son said he'd come on tonight, he hasn't come on chat. So, if Simon, if you was listening, thanks. You should go come and chat. Anyway, I'm going to go. So, let me know what you think. If you're watching this on replay, what do you think of how Chris answers the questions? Right? And how Katie answers them. And how they talk about Sebastian, like his age. Right? I know he's got autism, but he's very, very clever. Right? And he may have the, the age span of, say, an 11, maybe 12-year-old. But she talks about him as like he's a six, seven-year-old. How she just crafts with him, how she builds things with him. My grandson is six, and my other grandson's seven. This is the sort of things I would do with them. Like I said, if my... When my grandsons are 15, I can see them using these mechanical things where you have to wire it all up, build it all up, put all the wires together and all that lot. I can see them building stuff like that at 15. She has kept him so wrapped up in this bubble of that house. She's not talking to groups where we can make friends with his own uh, disabilities, his own ways of thinking. Because I'll tell you, when I'm out with my grandson, right, 
and sometimes they have these activities on, like this park by me. And it's so, I've been to several of these activities at several different places with him. And he gets on so well with the children there. And we notice that the children he's playing with are children with autism or ADHD themselves. It's as though they know and they just blend in with each other and they get on with each other and they accept each other for who they are. So why does she never take him to groups where there is groups of children his own age where he can mix with and join in with? You know what I mean? He's never gonna learn to socialise if they don't if they never took him anywhere like that. Yeah, okay, you can take him out for uh, dinners and meals and whatever, but that's not actually sitting at a table with a group of other kids his own age. That's not sitting at a table a group of kids his own age and talking. That's at a table with just you and him, the mother and Sebastian. Yeah. It's not it's got no social interaction with anyone because the mother has sh literally wrapped him up in bubble wrap as though to say, no, nope, you can't touch him, you're not speaking to him, no, no, go away. You know what I mean? She didn't want him having any interaction. Well, go out to his father's. Look at that time when his dad said he was out and they'd gone out somewhere. And some girl said something, and as I left, he said, his dad said, did you give her a phone number? And he's he gone shy, and he went, no, he said, go and give him your phone, give her your phone number. You know what I mean? Or get her phone number. Hi, Victoria. So, he treated him as the 15 or 13 or 14 or 15-year-old that he was. His mother treated him as that six or seven year old lad that she knew. She didn't treat him age appropriate. And that lad never played in that living room or anywhere else in the house. It was always in his bedroom when he played. So it's just cracks me up when you see how she talks about Sebastian and I, I am going to be typing up interviews that Seth has done, don't worry I'm going to get around to all these interviews, have them all typed up and eventually I'm going to get them printed out I'm going to buy myself a little printer and get all these interviews that I've got typed up, printed out and put in folders because I like to see it written out or in word like it is on the screen here. If I could see it like that, I could see the discrepancies. So, it's, I don't know, I'm trying to find out. I'll try and find that bit about. Uh, it's, you know what makes me sick as well about this case? Is he had, it was like, then she made this day so much fun for him. Breakfast, fun fact. You know what I mean? She done spaghetti waffles, fun fact. They went out and picked the niece up and they went to BJ's where they met the rest of, met the niece's mother and the, his other aunt, right? From there, they've come home. They put the groceries away. 
After that, they went out to do bowling and played some games there. Because at least bowling alleys now, it's not like when we was there. It's now there's a lot of more activities at least bowling alleys where you can play the machines and everything. Right? Um, so it doesn't actually, it doesn't actually state whether they had a game of bowls, whether they played a game. Right? And now that's a question I'd like to ask you. Like you state that you played games. Did you actually play, have a game of bowls? Did you do any bowling? Right? I went bowling a few weeks back with my grandson and his mum and his dad and his other grandparents. How I could carry that bowl? Because my right arm is doing absolutely fat now. Right? From that operation I had. I got a lot of fluid in my right hand. My hands swell up everything. So I was trying to find the lightest ball, the ball, bowling ball possible. I came third out of them all. So I didn't do too bad. Uh, yeah, we got, uh, here we go. Um, Yeah, just saying it's fine. Okay. Not hiding anything off. Um. See, not anywhere in this section. Not anywhere in that section does she say about hearing a noise. Right, nowhere. Here it is. Makes me laugh this bit, George, because as I say he didn't he used to, he he preferred to play indoors. Right? But then they go it wasn't a child that played outside. Right? But he did like going to the park. Well, that's outside. So he was a child that liked to play outside. Right. And then she goes, we get their little kids, little kids crafts from Lowe's and Home Depot. So he likes to build little things with me. It's 15. Not flipping five and six or seven, it's fifteen. Right? So, that's that really got me when I heard that and I was typing it out for little kids' crafts from Lowe's and Home Depot. So he likes to build little things with me. Yeah, that's what my grandson loves to do. He's six. So, but I remember one interview Seth talk, spoke about, and he said, 
when you listen to Katie talking about Sebastian, it's like she's talking about a different... It's like she's talking about when Sebastian was six or seven. He said that himself, Seth did. And it's true. When you hear things like, oh, we buy the little kids' crafts. Little kids' crafts. He's 15. Why don't you buy him something like Meccano? Where you have to build it and you've got to put the bolts in, the proper metal screws and bolts in, and get the electronics with it and attach all the wires to it to get it moving. Get him something like that. You know what I mean? Not these kids' crafty stuff. It, I'm going to go. I'm going to leave it at that. I will do another live on Friday and it'll be discussing. This interview still, the questions that come up on here, and the dispatch call. And if I've got time, I'll go over that very short interview that Nick Berries did with law enforcement, Sumner County Sheriff's Office. Okay? Tomorrow night, I'm doing a live again. Yep. This is about Jay Slater. I was just going to do little videos, but I've got too much to say in just five to six minutes, and I'll be doing five, six-minute videos all day long. So I thought, save my time, just do one live and get everything I want to say, said and done in that live. But that is not the mother and father might say it's closed. Law enforcement in Spain might say it's closed. But something's not right with that case either. So if you're interested in the James J. Slater case, I will be live tomorrow at 8. Oh, my son's... Well, he said he was going to come on tonight and he never did. So I'll be back again at 8 p.m. tomorrow. All right, so I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye.